The first candle we lit was to help us remember that we always need to watch for Christ's coming. The second candle was to remind us that we are to prepare ourselves spiritually by turning from our sin. As we light the third candle, let us remember that the birth of Jesus was a miracle. A virgin conceived and gave birth to a son, but not just any son. He was the son of God. God still works miracles. He can take a heart of cold stone and change it to a heart of flesh. In Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38, we find these words. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you, blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her who is called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Father of lights, you are the light of the world. You have come to strengthen the weary, to guide the lost, to walk with the lonely. You are the hope of all people. Teach us to realize your presence in our lives and continue to do miracles daily. Amen.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be glory. Good to be with you this morning. Uh, I am Steve Ferguson. I am not Ralph Morgan. Ralph is, uh, the Father Ralph is at Camp Allen finishing up his week as chaplain and residence there. So I get to be with you guys. And it's, I've been here uh, many times over the years, but it's been a long time. So I'm glad to be back with you this morning. Our worship continues on page two of your service booklet. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Look around you. Can you see times of trouble, people to me, see the violence, feel the hardness, all my people weep with me. Because we are sorely hindered by our sin, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lesson. A reading from the book of Isaiah, prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, 
to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall bind up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the God, who the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 126. Let us read it in unison. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then we were like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Our second lesson this morning is from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Jesus Christ for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Oh, come now, friend. 
sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him then, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. O oh, gracious and loving God, open our hearts today to hear your word, to prepare our hearts to celebrate the coming of your son, Jesus, who saved us from our sins and lives with us to keep us in a relationship with you. We ask all this in his name. Amen. Please be seated. Suzette asked me if I wanted a face shield. And I told her, no, they bog up on me, um, I guess because I have so much hot air, right? Mm. Some, some of you were thinking it, I know. But I, I also wear hearing aids, so with the hearing aids and the mask and the microphone, just one other thing on my left ear would probably make me hang down like this, so I said, I won't do it. Besides, I work in a hospital and I keep, uh, I wear a mask all day, every day anyway, so 
I'm used to it. It's good to be back with you. Uh, Calvary Richmond is a very special place to me. I've been here a number of times. I actually did a wedding here once uh, when the big altar was still the main altar. And that's the only time I have ever lost a best man. I was walking around the end of the altar to pronounce the final blessing. He did a face plant right, right there. Some things you just never forget, you know. But it's good to be back with you. I love you, the people here. You've got a great church, and I am blessed to be among you this morning. It's a uh, classic tale, good versus evil, the powers of darkness versus the powers of light, the virtuous versus the corrupt, and it's perfect for 2020. It's actually... A Disney cartoon, The Sword in the Stone. Some of you who've had children or grandchildren who make you, made you watch it over and over again know what I'm about to talk about. And that is the cartoon battle between the apparently befuddled Merlin and the purple wickedness of the marvelous Mad Madam Mim. And... It's worth remembering because it's really rather cleverly done. The movie came out in 1963. I probably wasn't even born then, but uh, some of you may have been. Actually, I was. Um, and, and just a piece of trivia, the, uh, how many of you have seen it? Okay. Um, in case you didn't notice it, Merlin's nose was patterned exactly after Walt Disney. The cartoonists did these kind of things all the time. And so, uh, you know, when I, when I read that, I said, I can, I can never see it again the same way. But Merlin and Mim are fighting it out in this one scene because Mim wants to eat one of Merlin's students, none other than King Arthur. So, obviously, a lot is at stake. The witch and the wizard agree to certain rules before they start, though, pledging, among other things, that neither of them will turn into a purple-spotted, fire-breathing dragon or turn invisible altogether. Those were, the, those were the rules. But as the contest heats up, the wicked Mim cheats and turns herself into a fire-breathing dragon the one she had promised not to become. So she explains away her duplicity by saying, I'm just a plain old fire-breathing dragon, not a purple spotted fire-breathing dragon. And just as Mim is about to incinerate poor Merlin, he apparently disappears. And enraged, the dragon Mim accuses Merlin of breaking their rules by becoming invisible. And that's when you hear Merlin's seemingly disembodied voice that says, I'm not gone. I am not invisible. I'm a germ. A germ. In fact, Merlin had transformed himself into a very specific and quite potent dragon virus. Maybe if it works on witches, it's called a crone virus. Um, no, that, that should not I tried that at 8 o'clock. I should not have done it at 10.30. But this virus that Merlin has become immediately reduces the dragon Mim into a pathetically sneezing, coughing, broken out in spots, bedridden mess. And Merlin triumphs by using his brains and by dramatically demonstrating that size doesn't matter. Well, 2020 has been a year in which the word virus comes up in almost every conversation we have. The fact that we're all socially distanced in this place today, wearing masks, being very careful, sanitizing our hands, tells us, reminds us that a virus is present. But I want to tell you about another virus I heard about. And it needs, it's not a coronavirus, it's not the, uh, the MIM uh, virus, 
It's the Advent virus. And it's going around. You have to be on alert on the alert for the symptoms. The symptoms for this Advent virus are hope, peace, joy, and love. Three of which we talked about this morning. The hearts of a great many of you here probably have already been exposed to this virus. And it's possible that everywhere people could come down with it. And in pandemic proportions wouldn't that be great and this could be a serious threat to what has been up to now a pretty rotten year and a fairly stable condition of conflict in the world now here's some signs of the advent virus a tendency to think and act spontaneously rather than on fears based on past experiences have you seen people living in fear this year? Mm -hmm. An unmistakable ability to enjoy each moment. A loss of intent in judging other people. A loss of interest in conflict. A loss of the ability to worry. Now that's a very serious symptom. When you lose the ability to worry, joy just pops right up. My grandmother... My maternal grandmother was the world's consummate worrier. In fact, if she didn't have anything to worry about, she worried because she had nothing to worry about. Another sign of the Advent virus, frequent overwhelming episodes of appreciation. Contented feeling of connectedness with others, even amidst the COVID crisis. And connectedness with God. Here's one that's kind of hard to see because of all the masks. Frequent attacks of smiling. Are you smiling now? See, I can, I can see smiles over here. I've learned to watch for smiles behind masks. It's, uh, some people, you know, do smile with their eyes. They, it, it's so obvious. Other people, you can't tell that they are, and so you have to look for those subtle hints. Another sign of a symptom of the Advent virus, an increased tendency to let things happen rather than to make them happen. And finally, an increased susceptibility to the love extended by others, as well as the uncontrollable urge to extend love ourselves. Now, I'm going to ask you when you leave here to get this warning out to all your friends, uh, to, because this virus has and will affect many systems. Some, some systems have already uh, been completely cleaned out because of it. Now, COVID-19 and the Merlin viruses are ones we want to avoid, but the Messiah virus, that is this Advent virus, is one you want to catch. And it's the church's job to infect you. Well, take that back. It's not the church's job because I'm not talking about the institutional church here. I'm talking about the body of Christ. It is our job as Christians to infect one another. But sadly, in this stern, sterile, COVID obsessed workaday world, our dreams and desires can be disinfected. And that can destroy our vision. It can destroy what you and I were called to be and to do. And that's disciples of Christ. And with the coronavirus in 2020, it's even been harder for us to gather as the church. I want to commend you here at Calvary. You're doing great work coming together. Many churches have not Reach the point where you have of wanting to come and to be part of one another's lives again. Because, you see, in our world, too often we get cured of viruses that we should be infected with. The soaring divorce rate in our world shows that many of us have been cured of lovesickness. number of people who've never noticed a beautiful sunset, a glowing rainbow, a whipped cream castle of clouds demonstrates how many of us have been able to come out from being under the weather. 
we were under the weather this morning, just as we started the Eucharistic prayer, I raised my hands and lightning and thunder. I said, Lord, that is great. Let's do that again at 1030. But you know, our society has, be has become inoculated, if you will, against love, joy, compassion, empathy, and vulnerability. It seems like we're on the devil's health care plan rather than God's. We need to, need to nurture along this tiny, invisible, insubstantial Advent virus until it can spread to pandemic proportions, not just during Advent, but year-round. And 2020 taught us what a pandemic really looked like. Can you imagine if love became pandemic? If joy became pandemic? You know, we can't properly prepare to celebrate the arrival of Christ in our midst until we come down with this Advent fever and try our utmost to spread it around. I guess we need to be like typhoid Marys of the advent of Messiah virus. But beware, there's a lot of germs floating around out there that try to mimic the advent virus. Maybe you want to catch it, but you don't know how. And there's one simple way to catch any virus. Expose yourself to the virus you want to catch. I don't recommend that to COVID. I mean, don't do that, don't do that. You know, you remember the uh, old Major League Baseball slogan, baseball fever, catch it? We don't see that around anymore. And any sports fan will tell you that there's no better way to catch the fever than by going to the game. I will tell you now, if you don't already know it, Father Ralph is a dyed-in-the-wool Astros fan. He will be at the games when no one else will be at the game. So just prepare yourselves before next season. Now, I'm, I'm sure none of you ever did this as parents, but my wife and I did. When our um, daughter came down with chicken pox, we decided we didn't want this thing spread out over several months. So it happened just as the Easter vacation was starting. So we put all three of our kids together, made them hug and kiss each other on the lips. And next thing you know, we had chicken pox all over the house. And they were all done with it. But that's the way you do a virus. Well, want to catch the Messiah virus? Expose yourself to people who have it. You know, there's a story told of a regular church member who stopped coming. And the, uh, the pastor... Uh, couldn't reach him by phone. He didn't answer the mail or, uh, or his email. So he went to see him. He knocked on the door and he said, where have you been? And he says, come on in, Pastor, and have a seat. So they sat down in front of the fireplace. And they just rocked back and forth in the chairs and didn't say anything to either one. And the pastor gets up and he takes the tongs and takes a coal out of the fire and sets it on the hearth. And in no time at all, the coal became cold and lifeless. And then he walked over and he took the tongs and put the coal back in the fire. And all of a sudden, it had its glow and its heat again because it was warmed by the heat of the other coals. That same principle applies to us as Christians. When we stop coming together, we get cold. The only way to get us warm and fever, feverish again for the gospel is to come together. You know, there's that God hole inside all of us that Augustine talked about, that God-shaped hole that only God can fill. But we spend a lot of time trying to fill it with things of the world, things that are not of God. Like the woman who was certain that she had a, an incurable liver disease. And so she went to the doctor to find out about it. And the doctor assured her that she was all right. He said, you wouldn't know if you had this condition anyway because there's no discomfort of any kind. 
And she said, well, that's my symptom exactly. I have no discomfort of any kind. Want to catch the Advent virus? Expose yourself to people who have it. Flee the manic mall madness and the Black Friday sales and Amazon.com. You know, there was a time when my neighbors thought my wife was having an affair with the UPS man because he came every day to our front door. We need Jesus in our world again. And I know this might sound like bad advice in times of lockdowns and quarantines, but mingle with those for whom the Messiah has a meaningful presence in their lives, even if you have to do it virtually. And those of you who happen to be watching this virtually, you aren't here, but you're, you need to gather together. Are we, we're in Fort Bend County, aren't we? Are we in Fort Bend County? Good. I don't have to worry about the Harris County judge getting all over me about telling you to mingle again. So. You didn't hear me. Oh, wait a minute. It is being broadcast, isn't it? Uh-oh. This may be my last time with you folks, but seriously, seek out the community of the infected and the inflamed and the fervor and the feverish, feverish and you'll catch the Advent virus every time. Amen. All who are thirsty, all who are away, come to the fountain, dip your heart in the stream of life. Let the pain and the sorrow be washed away in the waves of His mercy. As deep cries out, you deep, we sing, come, Lord Jesus, come, Lord Jesus, come, come, Lord Jesus, come. He washed away in the waves of his mercy as deep cries out to As 
He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we keep awake for the coming of the Lord, let us offer prayers to God who prepares a light for our path. For the coming of Jesus Christ in power and glory. Come, O Lord, and save us. For the coming of wisdom to teach and guide us. Come, O Lord, and save us. For the coming of Emmanuel, the hope of all people. Come, O Lord, and save us. For the peace of the world and for our unity in Christ. Hear us, Lord. For the church throughout the world and the faithful in every place. Hear us, Lord. For Michael, our presiding bishop. Andy, Jeff, Kay, and Hector, our bishop, Ralph, our priest, Nancy, our deacon, and for all the holy people of God, for the leaders of the nations and all in authority, for justice, peace, and freedom among peoples of the earth, for travelers, for the sick and the suffering, especially Mark Carter, Jordan and Michael Crow. Raymond Cleet, Mark Cooley, Carl Bagley, Belinda Delgado, Lou Dunn, Tom DuPont, Celeste Good, James Iverson, Charles Wheaton, Charlene McLemore, Dorothy Martin, Mary Robertson, Joy Robertson, Nieves Samora, Ranty Valdez, and David Van Diver. And for the hungry and the oppressed, for those in prison, and for those we name now, either silently or aloud. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. For those who rest in Christ, especially Sandy Bachman, Mary Clark, Nick Todar, Dale Butler, 
Elizabeth Stavanoa, Sue Darnell, and Clara Schnacke, and all those whom we name now silently or aloud. Hear us, Lord. For our deliverance from our affliction, strife, and need. Come, O Lord, and save us. Joining our voices with the Blessed Virgin Mary and with all the saints and angels of God, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. O rising sun, brightness of light eternal, son of justice, come and shine on those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death. Glory to you forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. There's another reason to bring your family to church. You have somebody to pass the peace with. <laughs> uh, just a couple of announcements. Uh, this evening at 5 o'clock is the Blue Christmas service. I know you want to be here and be a part of that. And if you would uh, like to donate a poinsettia for Christmas uh, in the narthex or the red slips, if you would pick one of those up and fill it out and drop it in the, in the offering plate or in the basket in the back. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Get ready, there's a train coming. You don't need no baggage, you just get on board. All you need is faith to hear the diesel's coming. Don't need no ticket, and you just thank the Lord.
Because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may, without shame or fear, rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he. For you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died, He gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. 
And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Yes, Lord. The feast of feasts. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart.
Does my help come from? My help comes from you, Taker of heaven, Creator of the earth. Oh, how I need you, Lord. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son Jesus Christ our Lord. 
And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. And through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. God is good all the time. You put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. So if you're walking through the valley, there are shadows all around. Do not fear, He will guide you, He will keep you safe and sound. Because He has promised to never leave you, nor forsake you. And His word is true, God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in His heart of mine. Through the darkest night, in His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. And we were sinners, so unworthy. Still for us, He chose to die. Filled us with His Holy Spirit. Now we can stand and testify that His love everlasting and his mercy they will never end God is good all the time he put a song of praise in this heart of mine God is good all the time through the darkest night his light will shine God is good God is good all the time and though I'm understand all the plans you have for me my life is in your hands and through the eyes of faith I can clearly see God is good all the time he put us on the way Though I may not understand all the plans you have for me, my life is in your hands, and through the eyes of faith I can clearly see. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good 